Hey friends, how's it going? My name's Miriam and I'm a poet and I'm sitting in an armchair, hence the armchair poet. And it is such a joy to be back with you on this lovely, mellow summer Saturday afternoon. Now I wanted to share two pieces with you today, one of which is mine, but before I get to that, I wanted to share with you a new poet that I am getting to know and loving called Bethany Leake. Uh, and this is her book, A Synonym for the Universe, and I ordered it and it just arrived this week, which is very exciting. Now, I got to know Bethany, um, or of her work, and a little bit to know her as a person, through this wonderful magazine called Soul Tread, which I have the joy of being involved with. Um, myself and a guy called Matthew Puller are the co-editors of the poetry section, which you can see here, Poetry Corner. Uh, and here you can see that Bethany is profiled uh, in the first edition's Poetry Corner. And so I got to give her a call and do a little interview um, and check over some of her work and, and look at what was we were gonna feature in the magazine and that was a real joy. Um, and her stuff stood out to me because she has a really lovely way of capturing both wordplay and imagery um, and accessibility. Often as a poet, you can go to one extreme or the other. You can be super accessible, um, which is great, but it means that sometimes you lack a bit of nuance or complexity in your work, um, or you can be super nuanced and complex and really inaccessible. Um, and that's the sort of stuff that sometimes puts people off poetry. And then Bethany just really seems to capture this in-between point. So I'd love to read a piece of hers. Uh, it was hard to pick which one I wanted to share because they're all amazing from this book. So this piece is called Space Shuttle, and it goes like this. I don't want you to be a space shuttle, burning out in flames across the sky until I can't see you anymore. I want a number in my phone I can call to hear your voice, and I don't need a star of helium and hydrogen a light singing out after death. I need you, oxygen breathing on my doorstep. Space has no use for your body. There is dust enough in that emptiness to block out a whole galaxy. So stay here a little longer and we can gaze at the stories of the constellations at night together from the green earth below where we are. And that's the end. Isn't that stunning? I can highly commend her work to you. You can find her at the Silent Attic on Instagram, all one word. Now, I think uh, a lot of other writers would attest to this experience that there is a temptation when you encounter um, glorious authors like Bethany, like the others in Soul Tread, to as an author to feel a bit jealous or to be like oh you know if they're really good can I be good enough and um, well there's a few problems with that <laughs> first of all I think it comes from a place of a sort of a theology of uh, limited blessing so someone else can't be good because maybe that means there's less talent for me uh, or less attention for me the other problem is uh, with that is why are we looking for attention uh, where are we getting our identity uh, but the best piece of advice that was given to me about what to do with this occasional sort of bug of jealousy that pops up, whether it be in writing or in people who come through our lives and perhaps we wish we were more like them, uh, is thanksgiving and thankfulness. Thankfulness is the enemy of envy. And I have so many things to be thankful for. Um, but I'm not going to read you a poem about thankfulness because I haven't actually written that one yet. I wanted to write a poem about writing, um, but writing when it's not um, magical and miraculous, writing when we can just be thankful for the gift of writing itself, for the blessing that it is uh, for myself as I relate to the world, for you as you relate to the world, and for all of us as we interact. So this piece is in my book, The Common Condition, and it's called to my ballpoint pen, and it goes like this. Stim and straw, twirl and spin, curl and stab and drop and stop. Carve your existence into the world, 
be the vessel for my reality, the channel for my uninspiring, unexciting, mundane reality. Fly. Tight loops and big swoops, occasional scribbles and odd ink dribbles. Every day, every day, fly. Make my existence felt. Prove that I don't need to be a superhero to make my mark because in you, every day I ask the same questions and I wrestle with the same truths and I grumble about the same boys and in you I tell the mundane, which is really the sacred, which is it's okay for life to be boring sometimes. So here's to you. For all the times I don't write a masterpiece, for all the times I don't catch a hint of heaven or a snippet of my soul, the times I just grumble and wonder, the times when I just went to work that day, if I was a little lazy, if I got some good work done, or if I had a fight and maybe we fixed it, or maybe we didn't. For the times the sky was just the sky, when the earth was no magic planet but just concrete and pavement, for all those times when life was just real life. This is why I have you, because my life is just as valuable in the mundane. And our call is to see the sacred in the mundane. So for every day when we don't do much, then dear ballpoint pen, fly. And here's the beautiful illustration by Crystal Booth to go with that. I am so thankful for days like today when I don't do much and yet our lives are just as valuable in the mundane. So here is to the glorious poems and the mundane days and everything in between. And I hope you are getting some good rest, some good sunshine uh, and some good beauty in the extraordinary and the ordinary. And remember that you are fully seen fully known and fully loved. And I'll chat to you next time.